Hey guys, today I will show you how to solve equations for exponential growth. Sounds a little bit fancy, but put it in a nutshell, it's just a specific type, special type, if you will, of differential equations, first order ordinary differential equations. And here's just example, dy dx equals 2y. So normally on the one side of your differential equation, you are given derivative dy dx. Also, it could be written in another way, equivalently. It could be written as a prime, so y prime equals 2y. It's the same. Or also sometimes you might come across another notation, so f pr prime of x equals so you might run into bump into just different looks of these equations if you will and typically on the right side you are given something like 2y 3y 5y so it could be kind of a multiple of y of the function if you will so where your constant so basically you are given kind of a coefficient if you like in front of your y so and typically your constant your coefficient is non a zero number so it's it doesn't happen to be zero and in a while after when I solve this equation, so I would come up with a general form. And I will go through the solution of this general form of these equations, and I will come up with a general solution, with a final answer, if you will, the, the, uh, with the formula. So basically that can be used. Now, let's take a look at this one. So the idea is you want to first of all switch the variables. And uh, b by the way, I do have a separate video on switching the variables in um, uh, I do have a video on switching the variables in ordinary differential equations and the link would be down below in the description box so you could definitely go ahead and check it out later now so I want to swap top and bottom on the left side and simultaneously on the right side of your equation so notice that 2y could be thought as a 2y over 1 so when I swap so in the next line it becomes dx over dy so basically what i did i just change swap switch the top and bottom and on the right side since 2y it's it could be third to y over one so it becomes one over 2y next step the idea is you want to separate variables so you want to get your y term on the one side on the left side typically of your equation and including dy and x terms on the right side also including dx so sometimes they're called separable differential equation or so we can do separation of variables i do have a couple of videos on this also the links all the links would be down below in the description box and go ahead and check them out later now the way i would do i will just multiply both sides of your equation by dy in order to move to bring this dy to the right side so i'm going to basically split out break down this dx over dy so by multiplying both sides of your equation by dy what it does it clears off this dy on the left side so basically in a nutshell dy goes away disappeared it's gone so you are left with dx on the left side so i'm going to write here and on the right side i'm going to just place dy on top of my fraction it becomes dy over 2y now we did separated variables as i mentioned before your dx so basically you don't have x term so it's good actually so we have less work to do and on the right side you are given y term including dy so at this point we have to integrate so we're going to take indefinite integral from both sides of your equation so i'm going to integrate left side and simultaneously, at the same time, the same goal, I'm going to integrate the right side. So notice dx could be also thought as a 1 times dx. So 
it's implied to be one, it's invisible, the default is one kind of coefficient in front of the x, and when you do take the integral, so you would be left with just x on the left side, since the indefinite integral of one is just x. Bring down the equality sign, and you are given one over two y, so recall that basic integration skills come up at this point so since the indefinite integral of 1 over y with respect to y it's going to be natural logarithm of modulus y since you are basically given y to the negative 1 power and this negative 1 power it doesn't basically fit into power rule for integration so it's a special case and you would be left with a natural logarithm. But notice that we're given 1 over 2. So in front, basically, this constant could be pulled out in front. So this 1 over 2 is taken out from this integral. And you are left with natural logarithm of modulus y plus c. So you have to add the arbitrary constant of integration at this point. So again, this a half, this constant, comes from over here. So do not forget to pull it out, to take it out, because eventually it affects to your final result, to your final integral. Now, we are not done yet at this point, and we always want to get y alone. We always want to isolate your y, so get y alone. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to solve it for y. So we're going to try write y explicitly in terms of x. I always, this is always my disclaimer, sometimes it's not possible and I always add if possible because sometimes you might end up getting something like implicit form where your y is not explicitly written in terms of other variables, in terms of x and other constants. But try. Recall logarithm properties and this C, this arbitrary constant of integration, they're kind of hanging around. So I'm going to multiply both sides of your equation by these two in order to get rid of these two in front. And at this point, let me rename this constant as a C1. Doesn't matter what name you are going to give it. And you will see the reason for this in a while. I want a little bit digress at this point. Notice that before I added this constant on the only to one side of your equation. So you don't have to, when you do take the integral at this point, you don't have to add this constant, another constant, let's, let's say, C2, to the other side, to the left side. Because when you rearrange your equation, when you move the constant around, eventually these two constants, they would come up, they would end up to one constant. So basically you can add up them and write it as a one constant and also rename it. So no matter to what side you're going to add it, so, and you have to add it to one side. It's more than enough. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm going to multiply through by two in order to get rid of, eliminate this half at this point. So, and this entire part, I'm going to multiply by two. So you are left getting two x instead of just x, so bring it down. Carry down equality sign, so these two and a half, so they cancel each other out, it's gone, and you are left with just natural logarithm of modulus y. And since, again, C1 can be treated as an arbitrary constant of integration, it's any number, we don't know what is that, it's a random number, and it gets multiplied by two, so again, you end up getting another constant, another arbitrary constant of integration. And I'm going to just name it as a C true. You could use any letter you like. Now, as I mentioned before, now we have, since we have natural logarithm of something plus C, we could combine these two into one. We can merge them together. So again, C2 
since it's an arbitrary cause of integration, could be thought as a natural logarithm of another number, let's say C3. And if you are given, recall that logarithms properties, and basically that's gonna be product property for logarithms, but we're going to use it in the reverse order. So if you are given two logarithms, no matter what base you are given, so in this case it's E, added together, it could be written as a one single logarithm. So it could be condensed into one, so merge, condensed into one with arguments with insights being multiplied. So in the next slide, it's gonna be, so bring down these two X, bring down equality sign, and I'm going to write it as a one single logarithm. So this C3 goes inside and Y. So we condensed, we did write it as a one single natural logarithm. Now remember, but we want to solve it for y. We want to isolate, we want to, at this point, kind of pull out this y, if you will. Now, all you wanna do, you wanna rewrite it and convert it into index or exponential form. So since we're given logarithmic form, so any logarithmic form could be converted, could be rearranged into equivalent exponential form. So by taking the little base and recall that natural logarithm stands for the logarithm to the base E, so basically the default is E, so this one could be rewritten as a logarithm of to the base E of C3Y. So what we're going to do, we're going to grab this little base E and I'm going to raise it to whatever you have on the left side, your power or exponent or index, if you will. So again, I'm going to take this E, raise it to this power, namely to X, and I'm going to set it equal to this argument of your logarithm or this inside, which is happened to be C3Y. So we got rid of these logarithms and we rewrite it this in the equivalent exponential form. Now, basically the last step. So keep in mind that we are looking for y, we are solving for y, so we want to write y explicitly in terms of other variables. Since we have this constant, arbitrary constant C3 attached to your y, so we're going to divide through by this constant both sides of your equation in order to isolate, to get your y alone. So I'm going to divide the right side, right hand side by this C3. And also simultaneously at the same time, I'm going to divide by C3 the left side. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to just switch the order of your term. So I'm going to write it as a y equal, so on the right side, this C3 goes away, disappeared, it's gone, so we got rid of this constant, it's eliminated, and on the left side, you are left with something like, let me kind of pull out this constant front, 1 over C3 e to the 2x power. And again, recall that C3 is just an arbitrary constant of integration, it's a random number. And uh, basically, I'm allowed to rename it again. So at this point, I'm going to recall it and rename it as it just C finally. So this one over. And my final answer, my general solution for this, for the, the original uh, differential equation for exponential growth, it's gonna be C times E to the power of 2x. So why did I rename this one over C? I just want to get it in the more compact and more neat form, if you will. And if you like, you could check it out by taking this general solution. So generally speaking, it's a bunch of functions. It's a set of functions that 
works for your equation that satisfies your original equation and you can plug it in you can substitute it to your original equation and make sure that everything checks out and everything works as i mentioned before this idea can be generalized can be extended to say this equation that sometimes called exponential growth equation if you will so dy dx equals a times y where a is a constant is a given number is a, a given constant as i explained before so and typically we need to impose this this a is a non-zero number is not equal to zero this is my little disclaimer at this point and the same idea the same idea applies over there so if you want to solve this equation precisely the same steps now let me go through these kind of quickly as i mentioned before precisely absolutely the same steps to solve it out first of all first off i'm going to switch the variables and you end up getting dx over dy equals one over a y so again basically you could take out you could you could pull out that solution before just replacing that constant 2 that were, were given in front of y replacing it with a done now i'm going to separate the variable so by multiplying dy both sides so you are left with dx on the left side and dy over a y on the right side at this point i'm going to integrate both sides with respect to x and with respect to y obviously and you are left with x equals so pull out this constant one over a as we did before and you have natural logarithm of modulus y and you need to add something doesn't matter i'm going to just use the c and from that point i'm going to just use c doesn't matter so i'm going to multiply both sides by a so ax equals and simultaneously to save time and space i'm going to combine these two natural logarithm and c it's going to be something like c times y at this point, I'm going to rewrite it, I'm going to rearrange it by definition, by applying the definition of logarithm. So I'm going to take this implied, this default base E, and raise it to this power, which just happens to be AX, and set it equal to whatever you have inside your argument, CY. And finally, the last step, we're here. So I'm going to divide through by C in order to get your Y alone, to isolate your Y. And also I'm going to remain, uh, rename, rename, rename this constant, which is comes up in front of this exponent, this exponential function. So it's going to be C times E to the power A, times x and that's going to be my general solution for this exponential growth equation all right i hope it has been helpful at this point this general solution can be used as a formula and for some practical problems for some applications in science in physics and chemistry when you come across something like growth or decay so this formula might be used as a, as a ready ready to go formula it has lots of applications so it's a plebe uh, it's applicable 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 not applicable applicable log. my brain is not with me today all right big thanks for watching and your brain i know everyone hates maths but if you like my video please hit this like share with your friends leave the comments down below and be sure to smash that subscribe button if you haven't so you will not miss out my new videos hey guys today <coughs> my voice <coughs> and my notes everything 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 is out of order. A political. A political.
<laughs> I made up a new word. Applicable, 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 yeah, applicable, applicable, applicable.